They call it the Razorblade 15 base model, an i7-10750H processor with 6 cores and 12 threads, the latest RTX 3060 graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. Now the standout feature of this laptop is that it's very reminiscent of the MacBook Pro. It has a fantastic trackpad and keyboard deck, it comes with speakers on the top grills for great audio immersive experience, and it is an all aluminum chassis. So if you're somebody looking for a MacBook Pro build, in a Windows at about half the price, then this is a great model for you. It is thin and light, not quite as thin as the MacBook Pro, but pretty darn close. The edges of this laptop are very well machined. There's a more aggressive edge along the top cover and then a very mellow edge that wraps around the bottom cover very nicely. So it's a very smooth transition from the bottom cover to the side panel. And while we're on the side panels, we can check out the port selection. You have your power supply port, your network port, USB type A, USB C, which is Thunderbolt, a headphone jack. And on the other side, we have another USB type C, we have a USB type A, and a HDMI port with a Kensington lock. Now, keep in mind that this is the base model, so you're not gonna have an SD card slot. That comes in the advanced model with the eight core 16 thread processor, the i7-10875H. The screen opens and closes smoothly with one hand. Another great thing about this laptop is it has dampening around the entire bezel of the screen. There's a little rubber edge here that keeps the screen closing softly so you don't bang the screen down on the top of the keyboard deck. The screen flex is minimal on the top of the screen as well as the bottom bezel of the screen because of the singular hinge that spans the entire screen. The flex between the keyboard and the trackpad is minimal if not at all as well as at the top of the keyboard deck. While we have the laptop open, let's take a look at the keyboard deck. A solid layout, missing the numpad, that could be a deal breaker for some. For me personally, it is not. The keys are snappy and responsive. It's a little shorter of a key press than say your average gaming laptop. It's a lot more reminiscent, like I've been saying, of the MacBook Pro 16, kind of that scissor switch style keyboard. Very snappy, very responsive. I like the RGB keyboard lighting, which is a kind of an upgrade from the MacBook Pro, a little more customization at your fingertips. You do have a full and in fact massive shift key. For me, that's a big thumbs up. I love a big shift key on the right side. And moving down to the trackpad, you have a massive glass trackpad that is as big as the MacBook Pro trackpad. Um, it is a manual click, however, so it does not have the vibration click like on the MacBook Pro. Personally, I like this better. It's gonna give you more consistency when you're dragging and dropping, right and left clicking objects and things along those lines. The speakers on the top of the keyboard deck create a fantastic immersive experience. Check out a quick sample. This laptop does come with a webcam and here's my thoughts on it. It's good, it's not super grainy on my face. You can see a little grain around me in the solid color areas, but overall it's a pretty solid webcam. Not great, I mean, I don't see much improvement happening year over year with these. I wish they'd upgrade these to like 1080p's, but it'll do the job. The color gamut range on this laptop is good. You do not get the you know high creator benchmark of 100% Adobe RGB or 100% DCI P3, but you do get a high sRGB. So for the price point, it is a great color accurate screen, has a good brightness as well as a low Delta E. If you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability of the Razer Blade 15 base model, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase with that link, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Let's keep this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Before taking a look at the benchmark specs, let's check out the ventilation. You have a vent running along the back panel of the chassis here that extends underneath to the bottom cover. You have two vents which are exposed here and they do a pretty good job of keeping the laptop cool. Now it got a little hot in DaVinci Resolve as I was running the test, but in Premiere Pro and Photoshop as well as web browsing, it is really nice. You have really strong fan control in the Razer Blade Synapse Command Center, so you can go from gaming mode to creator mode to quiet or silent mode and it respects your settings quite accurately. In Cinebench R20, you can see that this laptop does struggle a little bit to get up around the top end of the charts with the i7-10750. But when you move on to R23, it hits more of the mid-range level of the charts. And then as you get into Geekbench single core, you can see it still is not showing off 
in a big way. However, in multi-core, it starts to move up the charts a little bit in Geekbench. So as these simulated benchmarks are concerned, this laptop is really not showing off quite yet. But let's get into more of the real world tests and see what we got on our hands. Moving into Autodesk 3ds Max, it is in the top three contenders right behind the Gigabyte Aero series, which is the best laptops I've reviewed on my channel for Autodesk 3ds Max. Moving into Autodesk Maya, same thing, fantastic performance with that new RTX 3060 GPU. Moving on to PTC Creo, same thing, great performance. And as you drop into SolidWorks, you do see a decrease in performance. That's because SolidWorks really prefers the Quadro workstation GPUs as opposed to these GeForce RTX gaming GPUs. Moving on to the After Effects benchmark and render, this is definitely a great contender for both of those categories. So if you're a big After Effects user, the Razer Blade will fit your needs very well. 4K and 1080p export out of Premiere Pro are well optimized for the Razer Blade 15, the best export times I've seen on my channel to date. In DaVinci Resolve, the laptop does good, but not great. It seems like Intel is not as optimized for the free version of DaVinci Resolve, quite like Ryzen is. Ryzen laptops usually get better scores in the free version of DaVinci Resolve than the Intel laptops do. One of the most important things when video editing is playback, and 4K playback in Premiere Pro is smooth. So unless you have extremely complex 4K project or you're moving up to 6K, you're going to have no problems with the Razer Blade 15. The Photoshop benchmark for the 16 gig equipped model I have in front of me is about a 713. Now, if you upgrade this model to 32 gigs of RAM, you're going to see about a 100 point increase in performance for the Puget System benchmark. So that would honestly be a pretty wise upgrade if you want to get a little more performance in Photoshop out of this laptop. As as you can see, taking it up to 64 gigs really doesn't do that much. So really, I would have this laptop at either 16 or 32 gigs of RAM for optimal performance in Photoshop. As far as the upgrade path of this laptop, it's very simple. Remove the screws, pull the bottom cover off, which comes out with ease, and then swap the RAM or SSD. I recommend checking out Team Group. They have a lifetime warranty on their products, solid prices, and I'll include links in the description below if you wanna check them out. Now let's talk about battery life. For streaming video and doing productivity tasks, you're gonna see about three and a half to four hours on those tasks. But if you're gonna be doing some creative tasks like Photoshop or Premiere Pro, you're gonna see the battery life decrease pretty quickly. So it's about two hours for an intense Intensive workflow inside of Photoshop and about an hour and a half ish for Premiere Pro 4K playback. Something to consider is the fingerprints on this laptop. It happens very quickly. I have pretty oily hands and so I like to keep a cloth along with me to keep it clean. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next episode.